And when you do that, then you could one, be free to go do your job working on the higher level things, uh, whether you're a rugby coach or, or a CEO, that's always a really important aspect. Uh, but then, so it gets them, you know, kind of develop that maturity inside of their position. And that's the maturity that they need to get good at their job, to innovate inside of their job and all of those kind of things. But if you as the leader are constantly, constantly trying to manipulate what's going on there, trying to micromanagement, it's not going to work out. They're not going to learn that. And, you know, take the, the rugby example to really round it out there. If you are a coach who's constantly trying to pull the strings from the sideline, your players never learn how to do it themselves. If you're calling every play, being a football coach out there on the, on the rugby sideline, which you don't see very often, thankfully, but you do see people doing that, who are trying to pull every little string of corn to every little movement that the team is doing. One, they're losing their voice because they're just yelling the entire freaking game. But then two, the players might function inside of that system because they have the coach telling them everything to do, but they never learn how to make those actual decisions. Switch it back to the business setting. You want to go on vacation. You want to go to Cancun for two weeks. Now you have to constantly micromanage while you're in Cancun because you never give them the ability to be free and go do their own job. Those eight hour work days, or let's, let's bump it, dial that down. Let's say seven hour work days, 30 minutes. You can meet with them before 30 minutes. You can meet with them after. If that's your leadership and you're letting people just run with that, that's your test run to build up the patterns and the systems that they need in order for you to be able to take time whether it's time away from the business or time working on the business, which is the thing that the team needs from you to be the most effective there. Yeah. And I'm going to, I'm going to bring it back to uh, special forces. Uh, something we've dealt with. Uh, I started dealing with it towards the end of my operator uh, career, which was the, the micromanage because the technology uh, reporting requirements became so uh so good and and frankly so quick and so fast that the autonomy that we had you know even three or four years before that where it was a, a tw every 24 hours i would send a sit rep and then i just went and we did what we knew was right hmm. there, there's a lot of similarity to that too because who understood what was truly going on better me the guy on the ground who has that interaction, that personal interaction with the client, the bad guy, the opposition, whatever, whatever scenario you want to talk, who has the better understanding me or the guy back in the rear who, who may have done it once or twice in a certain environment in a certain situation, but he ain't right there. He's not the one with the eyes on it. Not the one who feels it, senses it, and and is living it that's the differentiator and as a business as a ceo yeah you built the business from scratch mr founder but you know what since you hired that guy it's not the same one of my favorite stoic quotes heracles man i love this one this is and probably that's probably the reason i remember this one all the time because I, it, it hits so much in so many different ways is that no man can step in the same river twice because he is no longer the same man and it is no longer the same river. Which means just because you did it this way last week before you hired the guy doesn't mean it's the same as it is with him doing it now, mm -hmm. right? That situation, that, that integration, that operation, the conversation, the sales pitch, the solving the problem for the client, the interaction with the client, it's different because the client is not the same person. Mm -hmm. Even if your, your widget is exactly the same. And by the way, the guy you put in that position is not the same as you. Mm -hmm. And even if it was an hour ago, it was an hour ago. Mm -hmm. It's all changed. It cannot be exactly the same. And, I, and that's one of the things, you know, even bringing it back around to rugby. The boys on the pitch, yeah, if I'm a coach, you know, at, at the top level and I'm sitting up in the press box and I'm, I've got the bird's eye view and all that, yeah, I can see, but I cannot feel. Mm -hmm. And there's a difference in a leader, a leader being able to feel what's going on. And that brings us back around to the trust factor too, mm -hmm. because as the leader, did I prepare my team? Did I prepare? train that guy properly and if i did 
then I should be able to trust him. If I didn't, then it's my fault. I'm not trusting myself to train them. How many business owners have I talked to over the years that when they hire somebody, they just hire them and say, well, you're a sales guy, go do it, go sell. You're an operations guy, go operate, right? <laughs> go manage, you're the manager now, manage, right? That, there's, there's your KPI, manage. And man, it is, it is so, you know, I say that in jest, but good grief, it is, it is so true. It's such a true factor that I think so many founders screw up mm -hmm. because they know, you know, they got part one right. I can't do it all. Mm -hmm. Part two, since I can't do it all, I'm going to hire somebody. And I'm going to hire somebody who's the guy that, you know, the expert in that, that role. Then just tell them to go do that role. Yeah. They never get part three right happens all the time. Yeah. And I think kind of bringing it back to, you know, the first piece of this conversation, like the leadership cures all, I think that's where it gets really interesting. Cause you know, we talk about with tribe and purpose of developing a team of leaders, having these different leaders throughout your team. And what that really means is that you get these same kind of perspectives, these same kind of drive, the same, uh, same mindset really from these different people throughout your team. And, you know, we talk about it curing all it's because if you have a marketing problem, you know, let's say you have a department of five people and there is a leader inside of that department, they're going to diagnose that problem. They're going to come up with solutions for that problem because you're giving them the tools that they need in order to do that. That's what a great leader does. Leadership is not marketing, but leadership can fix your marketing. And there's a slight difference there. Same thing goes in any other area of your business. Whatever that department is, 